Welcome to week eight, Bible Studies for Life. Today we start a new section. We're starting in a section about neighbors and those who are around us and how we need to respond to them, what we need to do. And we're going to start with a great passage, a great parable that Jesus tells, a story that he tells. It's a wonderful story, familiar to many people, whether they've been in church or not. Many of them know the phrase, the Good Samaritan. Uh, it comes from this story, obviously, that Jesus tells. So before we dive into that, in Luke chapter 10, be sure and like and subscribe and comment. If you've got questions, ask those uh, comments. Let us know how God's working in your life through this. Thank you so much for watching. Let's look at Luke 10. Then an expert in the law stood up to test him. You see this? These people, they are so full of themselves that they are going to test Jesus, <laughs> which is just... It's really funny, isn't it? All right. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, what is written in the law, he asked him. How do you read it? This is common, Jesus, asking this question, walking somebody into a trap in a sense, right? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. All right, so he goes back to Deuteronomy 6. He gives the Shema. Here is the standard statement, right? And in fact, these are things that, that Jesus has said, right? Now, I love this, and this is a thought, right? What must I do? What must I do to inherit eternal life? We like that idea, don't we? I get to do things, and I, I, need, to, I need to work to get saved. And that's certainly behind this, right? And Jesus says, well, you know, what does the law say? How do you read it? And his answer is, well, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Pretty good answer, right? He gives a pretty solid answer. Um, but remember, he started this with, he's going to test Jesus, right? So uh, he says, you answered correctly. He told him, do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Okay. Back here, he's testing Jesus, but now it's turned, and Jesus is starting to ask him questions, and now it's turned to justifying himself. How do I, how do I make myself feel better about what I have done? That's what it means to justify yourself. I want to be more comfortable with how I've lived my life, the choices that I've made in life, everything that I've done. How do I get more comfortable with what I've done in life? How do I feel better about myself? Did he really want to inherit eternal life, or did he just want to feel better about himself? I'm just going to tell you, I think there are a lot of people in the world today, many of them sitting in church pews, who don't really want to follow Jesus, who don't really want to lay everything down for Jesus. All they really want to do is feel better about themselves. If I could just feel better about who I am and what I've been doing, then that's good. I that. You know, because I've got some guilt. I've got some conviction. And how do I get over that stuff? You know, where that doesn't hold me back from doing what I want to do. That's this guy right here. Right? That's this guy. So it's like, well, who is my neighbor? Who is it that I'm supposed to love? Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him up, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Okay. So Jesus starts to tell this story, right? This man gets beat up. He's laid on the side of the road. He's been robbed. He has nothing. He's been left for dead. And the priest comes down, he, he's going down the road, and he sees the guy. It's important. He sees him and crosses the street. I walked down the other side. Then the Levite, he sees him and crosses the street, walks down the other side. Okay. A priest and then a Levite. My guess is this expert in the law is one of those. He's either a priest or a Levite. You know, I mean, Jesus is indicting this guy. He, he's telling a story. I heard about some guy who, right? But this guy wants to feel better about himself, and Jesus is not doing that. She said, you know, God, somebody just like you crossed the street and walked to the other side. Somebody that looked like you, somebody that works where you work, somebody that does what you do, somebody that claims that they have done all of this, 
stuff here. They've done all this. Somebody that claims that, they crossed the, the street, walked on the other side. His, his story's never, you know, um, uh, as innocent as it may appear, you know, just, oh, just I'll tell you a story about something that happened here. He, he's pointing at him. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him. Now, who are the Samaritans? The Samaritans are people from Samaria. Typically, the idea here is a person who has uh, Jewish blood but has intermarried with those who were not Jewish. Those were Samarians. That was this concept that these people were the hated. They, you know, they never wanted to go through Samaria. The Jew would walk across the Jordan, go up on the east side of the Jordan, and cross back over. Once they got north of Samaria, they hated Samaritans, hated them. Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, what did he do? These guys, when they saw him, they passed by on the other side. This guy, when he saw him, he had compassion. He went over to him, and he bandaged his wounds, poured on olive oil and wine, and then he put on his own put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend totally different response right here this guy sees him and has compassion on him and he goes to him and he bandages him and he puts him on his donkey and he takes him into town and and he takes him to a hotel and in and he he leaves him there and he pays for his stay and and then says look i'm coming back through when i do i'll pay whatever else the guy owes take care of him he he goes the extra mile right he didn't just stop uh and and pray over him he didn't just uh, bandage him and say, man, I hope you get better, encourage him. You know, he he took him to town and then he didn't just say, I'm going to deliver him to the emergency room and, you know, pretend I don't know him. <laughs> he said, I'll pay his bill. I'm going to pay his entire bill. Take care of this guy. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told him, go and do the same. Okay. The original question was, who is my neighbor? Jesus answers, which of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor? Now, the statement is, love your neighbor as yourself. And this guy says, who is my neighbor? So who is it that I'm supposed to love? And Jesus says, of these three guys, which one of them do you think proved to be the neighbor? You see how the, there's a flip here? He's not asking about which one of these thing, these three do you think loved that man as if he were their neighbor. It's which of these th three proved or acted like they were his neighbor. Who is the neighbor here? Well, he says... It's the guy who showed mercy. You see, he couldn't even say the Samaritan. He couldn't even bring himself to that. The guy that showed mercy. That's the neighbor. I, I, I love this flip that happens because now what he said is, what he's forced this guy into is to admit that the hero is a guy that I hate and he's the neighbor and that's who I'm supposed to love. I'm supposed to act like a neighbor to everybody. I'm, uh, everybody that I meet, I need to be neighborly to them, right? Realize that we're, we're all on the same planet. We're all breathing the same air. We're all going through the same struggles, and it's difficult. You know, I think when the priest and the Levite walked by for them, it, well, that guy's not my type. That guy's, his problems are not my problems. And the, and the Samaritan went by, and he had compassion because the Samaritan knew what that was like to be left he understood he he empathized right and and he believed even though this guy's not like me he's in this world he's human he has value every single person has value and created by the lord to be loved and we need to show love to them may not be the kind of people that we would normally hang around. They don't, you don't have to start hanging around, but act, be neighborly to them, right? Be kind. Show mercy to your neighbor. Show mercy to your neighbor. Boy, this is go and do likewise, right? This is tough stuff. 
for us. It's a familiar story. It's an easy story to tell, but boy, it is a tough story to live. Thanks for watching. Hope that's helped. God bless you. Appreciate you so much uh, being a part of this community that we have and watching these videos every week, and I enjoy making them. God bless you. Subscribe, like, comment, ask your questions. We'll see you next time.